Welcome uh, to the 2020 annual meeting for Brattleboro Community Television. Uh, so great to see uh, people tuning in here uh, through the Zoom feed. And my name is Chris Lenoir, I'm the uh, board president. And usually it's my job at these uh, annual meetings to tell you where the restrooms are. Um, but wherever you are, I hope you know where a restroom is because I can't help you there. Um, but what I can help you with are a couple of ground rules uh, for the annual meeting tonight. And one of those is to please keep your video camera muted uh, unless you're going to be speaking. And that's just going to help us maintain the order. And then uh, if you do want to speak or come on camera, please use the raise your hand function. Um, and you find that if you click on participants, um, you'll see a, a series of options along the bottom, including raise hand. So if you have something you want to say, um, somebody from BCTV will allow you to unmute your video as well as your audio and uh, you can make your comment or ask your question. Um, we've got a lot to get through tonight. Of course, tonight is extra special because we are bidding an uh, incredible fond farewell to Vlasta. Uh, after uh, so many years here at BCTV, she is retiring. And uh, you know, in lieu of any of my regular remarks that I usually make at these, I'm just gonna start the love fest <laughs> for Vlasta uh, and just say, you know, I, first of all, I think one of the most undervalued assets of any organization is institutional memory. And obviously, uh, the many years Vlast has been here, um, that is something that is going to take a while uh, to replace uh, among the other staff members who are here. And, and it really is something that I know that people are going to hopefully give you your, your peace <laughs> and quiet away from BCTV. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure it's not going to be easy for us not to be uh, saying, geez, if, if we just, you know, sent a quick note to Vlasta, she could probably answer this question for us. Um, I also want to personally thank you. Uh, when I first started volunteering at BCTV in my capacity at WKDT, uh, helping schedule everything, you were, you were really great at doing that. Um, and you were also really encouraging to me when I first came on the board and first uh, served as board president. And, and those words of encouragement really uh, meant a lot to me then, and, and they mean a lot to me now uh, as we uh, say uh, goodbye to you, or good luck, or I'll be seeing you, or whatever it is that uh, hopefully won't be uh, completely permanent. So um, there I go. I'm starting uh, the Love Fest. People I see are saying nice things in the chat. You're certainly welcome to do that, and there is going to be time. Uh, during the uh, agenda tonight uh, for people to say things to, to Vlasta as well. Um, I am going to uh, turn off my camera. I usually have the worst connection of anybody for any of these meetings. <laughs> so it's best if I turn off the video and turn it over to Cor Trowbridge, our executive director. Hi, Cor. Hi, everybody. Hope you can hear me. Oh, I like that. Like me to unmute. Okay, I'm unmuting. I <laughs> uh, hope everybody can hear me now. Um, I am just, uh, I'm really thrilled to be here, uh, except for that I'm in my same old office as I usually am in. So I, I, that's not that true, but I am thrilled to be here with everybody. And thanks so much for logging on so we can say a great fond farewell to Vlasta, which is going to be very hard to do. Um, but first, I am going to deliver the uh, state of the station report for this uh, crazy, crazy year that we just had, which is this is a time when we normally um, look back at the year of the accomplishments of the year, look ahead to what's coming up um, for, for tonight. We're just going to look back and, uh, and then we're going to get on to, to a roasting Vlasa, toasting Vlasa, both of those. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. I hope this works. And I mean, I know it's going to work is what I mean. <laughs> and um, hang on a second while I just get organized and present. Okay, so you should be seeing that now. Just put it, say, say something in the chat if you're not, if you don't see that. Um, like I said, this is how we start off the, the annual meeting. And first of all, I'm here speaking on behalf of our fabulous staff. And this is everybody at uh, the Christmas party, the, the holiday party in December in our new podcast studio, 
that we opened up to the public in February and closed almost immediately in March um, due to the coronavirus. And um, now we use it as a staff editing station, but <laughs> it will be back again. Um, hold, somebody's chatting. Oh, can't gather like that anymore. That's right, that's right. So this was taken in December, 2019. Um, and our, our underwriters, oops, I'm, I gotta go here. Oh yes, and I am also introducing uh, Helena Leschuk, who is taking over for Vlasta. And she's been in here sub, since September 2nd. And that um, has been a really great overlap time. And I hope you will make her welcome. Okay, um, the uh, underwriters for our organization, I'd like to thank because they do uh, really provide a great means of support for the whole year. Savings and loan, Brattleboro Savings and Loan, the food co-op and the Brattleboro Retreat. Before the pandemic, we were talking about this last year at this annual meeting. We had threats to the organization that um, we discussed in detail and I wanna bring you up to date on those threats. First of all, we had a change, a rule change at the federal level by the FCC that it was going to affect cable revenues or had the, the potential to really severely impact cable revenues. And while that change did happen, you can see that the year that we just had revenues ended up staying just about the same. We of course do expect a decline in cable re revenues over time from people moving from watching TV on cable to watching uh, online which for which we don't receive funding, but that is how this played out this year. Last year, we talked about exploring alternative revenues to try and make up some of that shortfall. We discussed all of these different um, ways of doing that. This is how it came out. Um, I showed you this budget last year. We had our actual numbers, our sort of amb ambitious budget for FY20. You can see the bottom line here is the totals. In FY20, we beat that budget. Um, with a 28% increase in revenues. Most of that was through uh, fees um, paid by select boards to help cover the costs of our service to them and about 7,000 other dollars from other, other various ways. What happened with the municipal center renovation? Last year, we talked about how um, there is a plan by Windsor Housing Trust to potentially purchase this building uh, renovate the top two floors into apartments, have the town on the first floor and move BCTV and the select board meeting room to the basement. Right now, uh, the feasibility study for that project has been initiated. They'll get the results in three to six months, then the trust will make a decision, and then it'll be another year or so of planning if it goes forward. So we still really don't know what's going to happen with that and it's a little ways off. We talked about Comcast um, in a lawsuit with the state over the terms of its certificate of public good and what that meant for BCTV. Um, what ended up being the terms of that agreement were that PEG channels would be allowed on the interactive program guide for the first time ever. So they can be DVR'd and searched and know what's, what's happening, what program you're watching, but they were all moved to a higher PEG territory um, and that's how we got our new channel numbers, channels 1075 and 1085. So for the first time in decades, new channel numbers. We also received a lump sum payment for remote streaming options solutions, which was a way of Comcast had of, of handling that obligation. And we received some funds for channel branding so that we could place advertisements about our new channel numbers. What we didn't know was coming. Um, and so we have never talked about is the fact that probably behind the scenes, Comcast was planning to purchase Southern Vermont Cable. And we found out in December, 2019, that this was happening. And uh, we attended a public, we, we submitted comments at a public hearing in February at Landmark College and ended up signing a, a memorandum of understanding with Comcast in March for a revenue increase through that contract to take place over the next three years. So all of our service territories, we used to have a Comcast service territory and a Southern Vermont cable territory. Now those will be one. Um, the other part of the MOU was that they finally replaced our analog modulator head-end equipment with a digital encoder. 
something fun that happened, and you saw a lot of photos in the slideshow, was the um, was Harris Hill Ski Jump. This was significant because in the past two years, we've provided production support for USA Nordic to produce a live stream of the ski jumping uh, event that takes place here in Brattleboro um, on uh, President's Day weekend. This year, USA Nordic did not do any live streaming. And so we were offered the opportunity to do the live stream ourselves. And we said yes to that. We bought a bunch of fiber cable for these enormous runs. We rented a van and we um, borrowed a, a switcher <laughs> that would work. And um, so we were the only live stream uh, in the whole ski jumping season um, for this international competition. And so that's why we were able to get 20,000 views on our Facebook Live video because they hadn't been able to watch the sport all season. Anyway, it's a big success. So the bottom line is we were really on track to have a very, a banner year, FY20. Um, financially, uh, significant productions, everything was going very well. And then COVID-19 happened. And uh, I'm sure annual reports all over, annual meetings all over the country are sounding like this, but um, like everyone else, we closed the office, we stopped covering in-person meetings. Um, what we didn't realize is that once we, we started working from home the very next day, setting up our workstations, getting, starting, figuring out how we could get everything to work. And there was such a demand for our services because just demand for basic tech support uh, was a big thing. Um, everybody needed to know how to get on to online meetings, how to produce online meetings, how to edit videos, how to produce videos, how to upload videos. Um, so we ended up having this huge surge of local content created by people either in online meetings or at their homes or however they did it and submitting them to BCTV to share them with our viewers. And this is including people at the state level. So just looking at the numbers, uh, 90 online, online meetings, um, over 300 shows submitted, 10 new series. In addition, the staff was working with producing all these meetings and distributing them. The staff also produced um, four graduations or helped produce four graduations and uh, some of them virtual, some in person. And we're ending up with the most locally originated programs we've ever had. Um, I'm proud to say that all staff were able to remain on payroll um, with the help of a PPP loan and um, we just kept working. And up here is the headline uh, from the reformer that I kept up in my basement to keep me inspired. Since the reopening, uh, July 6, we have been busy um, within the constraints of the health protocols that we've established um, with the studio in use, edit station and curbside pickup with reduced capacity from before. Uh, we, we are seeing more and more requests for major live stream productions, such as this Arts Unite Wyndham telethon from five different venues live at the same time. And also uh, just last weekend, Saturday was the first, Brattleboro held the first online town meeting in Vermont for 13 hours via Zoom. And that was all live on BCTV, on our channel, on Facebook, on YouTube. Um, in, in partnership with the town. So that's what I had to say about the year in review very quickly. And um, we want to go, uh, I, I have, I did put the annual report into the chat. If you scroll way up, which has all the details or a lot of the details. And Brian has prepared a little video summary of some of the, of some of the um, programs that were submitted during the shutdown between March and the end of June, so you can get a taste of that. Well, number one, we passed it, uh, in the House uh, just today, so that's the good news. Number two, the PPP program, which is, stands for Payroll uh, Protection Plan, was intended to help our small businesses make it through this period when they had to literally turn the lights off uh, because of social distancing.
true. Gas leaks are deadly for trees. Yeah, and we have a picture here of a of a woman holding a dead tree um, that was apparently killed by natural gas. wasted the next five or six weeks. Uh, February was a wasted month for the U.S. On, and as a result, not only did we have to disrupt our economy to a far greater degree when we finally got around to it, but e even having done that, we suffered enormous trauma. Thank you indeed to the producers and to everybody uh, who uh, helped make everything possible these last uh, six months here. Certainly, Core and Brian and Nolan and Vlasta and all the field producers uh, all working extra hard uh, and adapting uh, to this reality. Uh, I don't want to call it a new reality, a, a interim reality uh, where we're meeting online a lot more. I mean, it's kind of the same church but different pew when you're talking about technology and I think they've really handled it uh, in a great way and I, I hope that video is inspiring to all of you as it is to me. We are in the member business portion of the meeting so this is an opportunity for people to ask some questions about station business. Um, if you want to ask a question please raise your hand. Um, use the hand raising tool I should say and, uh, and you'll be uh, called on. You'll be uh, your video and your audio will be unmuted uh, by the folks moderating this. We did get some questions and comments submitted uh, with the survey monkey that went out for the elections. Uh, so I am going to start with those uh, while we wait for for other questions. And the first one: um, How are you getting such great media? Also, how many more shows can Marty Cohn do? Um, it's kind of a, a, a self-closing loop there and answering that question in one way because Marty Cohn is the reason we get the great media coverage that we do like the headline that CORE showed. Uh, Marty has been a board member now for I think three years, I think one term, I believe he's, he's renewing his, his second term now and uh, really has um, applied his, his skills, his trade, his profession uh, to great use for BCTV. And then on top of that, too, uh, I guess the question is how many hosts, how many shows can he host is, is up to Marty's family uh, and how many more they're willing to let him host uh, because he does a couple of shows on the regular uh, with Rotary. And then, of course, he's uh, been doing the Meet the Candidates right now uh, and really, really appreciate everything that Marty has brought uh, to the board at BCTV and to the programming. The next question um, is one that Cora addressed during uh, her presentation. It is uh, the move to the basement. Is it still in the works? And uh, just to refresh what Cora said there, uh, it's in a feasibility study stage. Uh, that is three to six months. And I guess at this point, it's more of a question of if rather than when we move. I mean, you still have to find out what exactly is going to happen to the building before we have to move it. But regardless, it's it's a long way off uh, from BCTV having to make any decision on that. I don't know, Cor, if you want to jump in here and add anything to that. I was just trying to, to re, regurgitate what you had said during your portion of the meeting. But if there's something, it looks like you're unmuting here. Is there something you want to add? No, really, I agree with you. It's just, there's no point us really doing much until we know it's a real thing. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, the next, I was just chuckling at somebody put into the chat, but I'm going to read the ones that were submitted first. So please do continue to put questions into the chat or, or raise your hand. 
Um, this next one, will BCTV board members receive an annual payment or stipend for their services going forward as more boards around Vermont seek to professionalize? Um, I'll just say that hasn't been discussed. I wasn't aware that that was a move, uh, that, that boards were pro professionalizing and, and expecting compensation. Uh, I certainly didn't get into it for the compensation. I, I'm not going to speak for all of my board members other than to say that it hasn't come up uh, and, and maybe it will, but it really doesn't seem to be something that is a priority. Uh, for, for this board right now, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe when we get to the new business portion of the next meeting, somebody will bring it up. Uh, but thank you for making us aware uh, that other boards are are moving in that direction. I, I wasn't aware of that. Um, the last is a comment. Oh, there's a couple of comments here. Um, thanks, Chris, for your continued commitment to BCTV. Um, and then, oh, this is for George Anthus, who is our newly elected board member, and hope we get a chance to inter introduce him uh, a little bit later on. Uh, I read no further down your extensive list of achievements and qualifications than WVEW to earn my vote. Welcome. So, yeah, a lot of WVEW supporters out there. Uh, somebody else uh, put in a comment, keep up the good work, invest in some laptops with editing software so people don't have to come into work. And then lastly, you do a great job. I'm impressed. Uh, so thank you all uh, for comments and, and for voting uh, during uh, the elections uh, for, for the board. Uh, I was also up for election and happy to be reelected to my third term uh, here at BCTV. All right, um, I see one question in the chat and that is how many people is BCTV going to hire to perform all the work Brasta does? And that's what made me chuckle. Um, we're only hiring one. We probably, if we had the budget, could stand to hire a couple more. I, you know, I, certainly Vlasta has, has been a pretty valuable uh, member uh, of this of this organization for a long time. Um, and uh, Helena, from all I have seen and heard so far, is doing a great job, and uh, I'm sure she'll she'll pick it up uh, really quick. Um, are there other questions or comments that I'm not seeing here? I, not totally familiar with the Zoom platform in a way that if I missed somebody's hand raising, uh, I apologize for that. But uh, I'm sure Cor or Brian or Nolan will set me straight, uh, if not. Hey Chris, I'm not seeing anybody. There's okay, anybody. thanks Nolan. All right, appreciate that. Um, and of course, if somebody does have a question, uh, please feel free to, to jump in at, at any time here. Happy to, to pause things for a minute. To, uh, to do that. Um, I did just uh, mention the election of board members. Sorry, Corey, as usual, I'm, I'm going out of turn, not reading the agenda. Um, but I did want to take a moment to also acknowledge uh, three board members who are retiring. Uh, I'm not seeing any of them in attendance. I am seeing a number of current board members in attendance, and I'll just call out their names. Uh, Marty Cohn is here. Uh, Alex Beck is here. Leah Goodman is here. Uh, Bob Gammon is here. I'm assuming Lynn Barrett is the Commons uh, Vermont Independent Media. And I see George is here. Uh, so thank you all uh, for being here. Uh, but the three board members who are rotating off uh, include Pauline Dean, uh, who came on the board the same time that I did. And uh, Pauline has served as secretary of the board for a long time. And um, she was on the personnel committee, instrumental in developing our new employee handbook. Also, uh, when we first were renegotiating our uh, contract with Comcast, I won't even go through all the, the trials and tribulations of that that include this whole FCC lawsuit and whatnot, but uh, Pauline was, was on the contract committee, I believe, as well with me, uh, and so we did a lot of work there. She also accompanied CORE to make presentations to libraries and select boards about BCTV during those contract renewals. Really appreciate Pauline's uh, service to the board for uh, just, you know, just about six years before she had to rotate off. Jesse Kreitzer, uh, who was appointed in January 2018, uh, he was a professional filmmaker. Well, he is a professional filmmaker. Uh, and he had been a municipal meeting producer at a peg station in Newton, Mass. So being able to get him here for us was fantastic. He knew firsthand uh, about what the field staff were doing. Uh, he was fantastic on our equipment committee. 
in terms of helping us spend our money wisely to upgrade equipment. Um, he really was a, a great, great asset to the board for the, the three years he was here. Uh, he's currently the program instructor for the film and digital, digital editing program at the Wyndham Regional Career Center. That's provided a bridge to BCTV for that program. He's also currently the chair of the select board in the town of Marlboro, uh, and we wish him luck with that. Um, and then finally, uh, Jim Verzino, uh, who was also on the board for almost three ter or two terms. He was appointed in August of 2015. He produced a Greater Good Entrepreneur show, and he was awarded Series of the Year in 2016 for that. He was one of the first producers to use Skype interviews on his show. Now all the producers are using Zoom or, you know, whatever uh, similar uh, tool as Skype was. Now uh, he was our treasurer. Uh, he was also our vice president. Uh, he was willing to really step in and do anything. And he was versatile enough that he could step in and do anything. And uh, certainly networked to recruit a lot of board members over the years uh, through his capacity as being a member of the Sunrise Rotary. Uh, so I'm sorry that none of them were able to join us tonight that I can see, uh, but really wanted to take a moment to, to acknowledge all of them uh, and all their good work. So I uh, hope you'll join me in whatever the, the virtual version of applause is uh, for those, those board members. And now the next portion of the meeting is uh, the, port, the most important part, right, Cor? Uh, it's time to say all the nice things that we want to say or as you roast and toast, I guess. It's up to people there uh, for Vlasta. Um, yeah. Great. I um, We're going to see a slideshow that no one's going to share. And I'm going to go first, if that's OK. And, um, but, uh, and then if, just raise your hand uh, using the participants list there uh, if you want to speak after me. Um, hope, and and uh, Vlasta, if you want to turn on Vlasta's video, you could do that too. Um, no one, you're going to turn on that slideshow. Yeah, no. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, Flossa is always talking about how she is the most veteran employee of BCTV, but then she reminded me today that, um, that there are still people here who have been here longer and that one of them is Maria Dominguez, who is one of our producers. And maybe there are one or two board members with the same length of association with the organization as she had, but really it's pretty remarkable. Um, yeah, she was hired um, in 2002 in August by Haya Maid, and um, who was the executive director at the time. She entered the organization at a turbulent time um, as Haya ended up leaving a year later. And then her replacement, Tim Lindop, only lasted two years as executive director. Then there was an interim um, who was part of hiring me and she has been stuck with me since January, 2006. Um, throughout the leadership turmoil, she really held the place together uh, and kept the doors open for producers and staff. And we've been working side by side for 14 years. Um, for, for someone like Vlasta who literally takes on anything that she can do, it's hard to quantify exactly what she did here. Uh, when she was hired, of course, it was a different time technologically with our programs delivered to our cable channels, channels by a network of VHS and DVD decks with a computer switching between them as long as they stayed on and the DVDs weren't too scratched. Uh, Vlasta and Harold Holm would run upstairs to the uh, third floor where we had the, all the decks and, and replace the program each week so that, um, so that the new programs could run. Um, in 2011, the calendar management part of her job really exploded when we signed a contract with Southern Vermont Cable, which meant that our municipal meeting coverage expanded from the two towns we used to provide staff coverage for, Brattleboro and Vernon, expanded to eight. And that meant hiring field staff such as Rich Mellinson, um, who was the first of what is now as many as eight people. And suddenly Vlasta had the job of finding out when the meetings were scheduled, scouring the web for the agenda, assigning someone to do it, and then juggling all of the equipment and staff as the meetings were constantly rescheduled and unscheduled. 
But this is a role that is almost impossible for the rest of us to step into when she was on vacation because she appeared to keep most of it in her head. Uh, for producers, she made sure everybody got, got to use the equipment and facilities they wanted, even if that meant meeting Joe Bushy downtown with an extra battery during gallery walk, whatever it took. Um, in a previous job, uh, Vlasta was a purchasing agent, which you can tell because even Amazon.com was no match for her skills in finding the best deal, not paying taxes as a nonprofit, returning literally anything, and refusing to pay $2 in postage to mail a DVD when someone could come and pick it up, not that they would, which was always my point. Her ability to track invoices and payments made it possible for us to charge for the hundreds of staff produced programs and meetings we produce each year. Um, I've been asked to present at conferences about how BCTV manages all this charging for our services. And I usually say, you need somebody like Vlasa. Um, many of you know her best from her role as chief receptionist and hospitality queen, hearing her familiar greeting, look who is here when you open up the door to of the office, no matter how many years have gone by or by or receiving check cookies at Christmas time. She's maintained friendships with many of our producers long after they became inactive with BCTV and made BCTV a part of her family. I finally had to make her officially part of the video camp staff as her grandchildren were campers, her nieces were interns and everyone was hanging around at her desk anyway. So uh, along those lines, I have to end with how much her Czech heritage has become a part of BCTV with the celebration of name days, explaining how the Czech proverb for whatever you're trying to say was a little different and sprinkling the word the in here and there because it's not part of the Czech language, such as saying uh, she's in the meeting instead of in a meeting or my personal favorite, she's in the mood. Because of her life experience emigrating from the Czech Republic, all of our crises at BCTV, even though some of them were, as she would say, like nightmare, were not such a big deal. And I always pr appreciated that calming perspective. For your retirement, Blasta, I hope you get what we always joked about, what was right around the corner since we started working together a very quiet week. I'm sure it's out there for you. As for us here at BCTV, you can think of us as we follow the staff motto you made so famous, we are working no matter what. Thank you for your hard work for BCTV all of those years and for keeping all of the doors open. Great. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, everybody. Please don't make me cry. <laughs> it's very touching. Give me a moment. <laughs> it's been a roller coaster of 18 years. It started very turbulently, first few years, but everything calmed down when we had steady crew of Frederick Roland, Cor and me, and we worked together, I think, very well. Frederick was with us for eight years, Roland for 12 years, and I think that we, we did everything we could to make BCTV what it is. Um, it was very nice for me to be part of it. I became to know almost everybody in the town of Brattleboro because covering Brattleboro select board meetings or school board meetings and a town select board meetings, you are in contact with so many people from different parts of uh, towns and Windham County and all legislators. So I felt more at home in Brattleboro than I feel at home in Dover. Uh, board members were very helpful and understanding and I think I'm going to miss everybody, but I also, I'm also looking forward to a new chapter of my life. Um, it's very bittersweet feelings and mixed feelings to end today. I just can't imagine that tomorrow I wake up and I'm not coming to work. So um, I would like to thank everybody. I enjoy working with you and I hope we'll stay in touch uh, if you ever need to be in touch with me. I put my personal email address on my outgoing <laughs> message and 
So please do so, and I hope to see you around. I'm not moving out from Vermont. I just plan to do some traveling. First, I go to Czech Republic to spend time with my mom, who is 91. So I will do that, but then I come back and I hope to see you around. Thanks again. Appreciate it. So we have some people, I think you want to speak. We have uh, Andy Papelka requesting a moment here. Hi, can you hear me okay? That's my son. <laughs> we just yes, uh, uh, wanted to embarrass you. I think the kids are on line two. They logged in because I'm still at work and they're logging in from home. So I don't know if it's possible to unmute them if they're logged in, but just wanted to wish uh, congratulations, mom. Thank you, Andrew. And Core, great slideshow. Nolan, you can unmute him. Yeah. <laughs> or mute him. <laughs> I'm trying to see if I can get Sonia here. Or... Or? Nolan? Yep. Sorry, hang, can hang on. Them? Can you get them? Here, I'm gonna unmute you, Dell, because Dell has his hand up. Mm -hmm. Sonia, I think you're. You should be unmuted if you're there. Yeah, Sonia is here. Seem maybe they're having some microphone issues there. Oh, they can wave. <laughs> Don't wait too long. Um, Sonia, I'm going to move on here. Maybe you guys can figure out your microphone. Yeah, uh, maybe, but it doesn't seem to work. Here's Wendy. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Okay. I'm actually not Wendy. I'm Dell on this screen for, because it's the name of my computer. But anyway, it's Wendy O'Connell, if you can see me. Um, do I need to click start my video? No, I don't. Do I? Do I need to do anything here, Nolan? Uh, you can click start your video, Wendy. I can? Okay. Yep. All right, let me see where that is again. Where is that? I just had it here. Okay, got it. Got it. Okay, start there my video. Go. Okay, so yes. Hello, Vlasta. Um, I just <laughs> want to tell, <laughs> tell a quick story. Um, a couple of days ago, I ran into one of our notable newspaper people in town, and he said, I hear things are kind of rough at BCTV. I said, you know, the FCC stuff, the fundraising, all the changes, the pandemic. And he said, no, I, I mean that you're losing Blasta. And I said, yep, there's that. And um, so he just went on about 
what a big part of the community you've been over all these years and how much you mean to all of us um, and how much he was going to miss you and um, uh, not having you around. So I thought I would share that with people. Um, with all of the different adjectives we're going to hear about Vlasta tonight, and we've already heard, um, I could I could go through the list. I would also, um, I would add two of my own uh, to all of the efficient um, and uh, all of her great organizational skills. I would also add her generosity um, with both her time and her attention always, um, and also her bravery. And uh, I say that um, uh, in reference to a couple different things. One is the fact that I've been, um, I've been trying to get Vlasta on my TV show at BCTV, Here We Are, um, where I interview different people from the community. And I finally got her to say yes. And I know that she was being brave about doing that because she really didn't want to do it, but she did. So her show is up and running right now. And she was just lovely. It was just so wonderful to have her on the show. Um, and so I hope you guys tune in to see a little bit more, know a little bit more about Vlasta and her wonderful and rich life. Um, Vlasta, I thank you so much for all that you've done. I've only known you for three years, but you're a friend. Um, and I really value, I really value that friendship. And um, I thank you also for putting so much goodness into our community. Thank you, Wendy. I really appreciate that. Thank you. We appreciate you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, I'm gonna unmute you, Janice. <laughs> so, you guys hear me okay? Yep. Okay. Um, I actually had to write something down because I didn't want to cry. <laughs> And I was thinking, oh, it's good that they can't see my face during this, but here we are. Um, this message is actually from M. Richards and me. Um, she is unfortunately home tonight with a stomach virus. Um, so it's from both of us. It has been a true pleasure and a privilege to work with Vlasta at BCTV. I've known her since 2015. M has known her several years longer. She was the first person I met when I started as a volunteer and then later joined the staff as a field producer. She has always been, I think I've seen and worked and talked to, with her more than anyone else at the station. Um, and she's always been there for us, for me, for us, for everyone. And I think we can all agree to that. Uh, she's been outstanding in her role as office manager. Um, she's always there when I would check in and check out my equipment. Um, she always took care of our time cards and was constantly reminding me that you haven't turned in your time card yet. So she's the reason I got paid. Um, she was always arranging and setting up and getting the food for the many programs that we were, you know, the volunteer ones, the town meetings and the strolling of the heifers and the graduations and on and on and on, the ski jump. Um, and she's been there at these events. You know, she's been there helping out. I think it, she's also even run the video camera at times when they were short of people. So she's done it all, but she's done more than that. Um, she's helped me carry equipment down to my car when it would have taken three trips because there was so much. She's run equipment out to us in an emergency when something suddenly stopped working in the middle of a major meeting. Um, when we stayed late at the station, she would walk out with us to our car because it was late at night. And she's helped us outside of business hours. She's given people rides. She's gone shopping for people. And she's even taken people shopping. I mean, she's just gone above and beyond. But on a personal level, Vlasta has become a very dear friend. Um, we are both daughters, we're parents, and we are grandparents. And we have been caregivers with an aging parent. And although hers, her parent is much more long distant than mine is. Um, we have shared the good and the bad together and Em and I will really miss her at BCTV, but we are looking forward to seeing her more outside of BCTV now that she has some time. So best of luck to you, Blasta. We love you. Thank you, Janice. Love you too.
Okay, I'm not seeing any more hands here. Is there anyone, anyone else who'd like to speak? Can you try Sonia one more time? She said yep. she can hear us. No. Hi, Caitlin. That's Caitlin. Why can't I hear her? Hi, hi Sydney, hi Caitlin. Those are our campers and junior counselor. <laughs> okay. They love it here. Love you too. Okay. Okay. Oh, uh, I think Chris is going to read the comments from the chat. So let me. Remind Chris election. <laughs> Let me get Chris on here. Hmm? Here I am. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of people have been putting chat for those as well who may have not been along and I meet along with their comments. Um, so the first one from Shard and Yord. We'll miss you, Vlasta. Thank you. Wishing you good health, happiness, and exciting new projects of your own. Um, ben from uh, Hugh. Thank you for your enduring kindness to our core and all the BCTV staff and friends. Uh, George Harvey, I always wish to see you return. <laughs> uh, Milan says, congratulations, mom. You are one of a kind. We love you. Bob Gammon, Vlasta, thank you for all you have done to make BCTV what it has become. You will be missed tremendously. Uh, Andy Reichsman, who was the one who asked how many people it would take to replace you, by the way, says, you are welcome every time I came in was so warm, I can't imagine walking in the door and not seeing you. Best of luck to you in the future. And then there's a couple more, I think. Uh, one from Janice, who also just spoke, but she wrote, uh, Vlasta, you are a beautiful person and an amazing human being. Em and I wish you the very best in your next adventure. And then, oh, looks like here's another one. Uh, Adam Hinckley. I have known Vlasta for 10 years now, starting with the first video camp I attended. I always thought of you as the fierce mother figure of the camp and of BCTV. You kept me in check when I needed it and we'll all miss you very much. Thank you for everything you've done for BCTV and for me. <laughs> uh, looks like a few more coming in. Michael Bosworth, have a great retirement, Blasta. You're one of a kind of the best kind. And Greg, uh, congratulations, Blasta. Best wishes in retirement. And from Lynn, dearest Blasta, what can I say? There should be more people like you in this world. <laughs> and finally, Derek Jordan, good luck, Vlasta. You're the best. And really nothing else needs to be said. You are the best. Thank you, Chris. Uh, thank thank you, you, everybody. I really appreciate that. Yeah. Very touching. Thank Very you great. all. Chris, didn't you forget thank elections? You. We have, sorry to interrupt. We have one more hand raised here from Don Ho. OK. <laughs> Please forgive me if things go wrong because I was born in the last century and I don't know anything about this technology. But I'm a gas from the past <laughs> and Vlasta go, go and I go back to when she was in San Jose uh, in the early 70s. And so I've known her longer than any of you except her family and I'm glad to see Andrew's there and Milan and Sonia and it's I thank her I don't have any grandchildren so I thank her for sharing her family with me and just to express that you know I guess my encounter as a blessing I was glad to see that you all 
uh, have been able to be recipients and share in that bliss. So, ahoy to all of you. <laughs> <laughs> Don was my pharmacist when I was pharmacy technician in California, Santa Clara, Good Samaritan Hospital. <laughs> True story. True story. True story. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was really voice from the past. And we have a comment from uh, Joe Bushy on Facebook. It says, thanks to everyone for your service to the community and special thanks to Vlasta for 18 years of unwavering commitment to excellence in all that she did for BCTV and the community. And then we have three hand clapping emojis uh, two thumbs up emojis and a heart face emoji. <laughs> Thank you, Joe Bushy. <laughs> now, the core. Hi, Vlasta. I, we, got, we also received one video message from uh, Susan Dunnington, who's been on the chat here also, um, that I want to share with you. OK. Uh, OK. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> okay, that was worth it. That was good. Thank you, Susan. Uh, anybody else want to say anything before we go? And um, thank you all for attending the annual meeting of BCTV and uh, and Wasta's retirement party. I want to say a special welcome to George Anthes, who's joining us uh, in the BCTV family as a board member, um, elected by the members by e-ballot. And Chris, thank you for running for re-election um, and being elected again um, as board president for another or as for another three um, years. I, I really appreciate everyone's commitment to this organization, and of course, Vlasta is the most of all. Uh, the board is going to meet in a different meeting after this um, for our annual meeting of the board to elect officers. Um, but that is a separate thing. Uh, if there's not anything else, uh, Chris, you could adjourn about, the meeting. How about one more Facebook comment? Oh, great. From Peter Adamek. Blast uh, all the best in your retirement. Friends from Canada, love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Anansi from Canada. I am missing Terry Martin. How come Terry Martin doesn't want to say anything? <laughs> My Let, let's get uncle Terry Martin. buddy for so many years. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you very much again, everybody. I love you. I miss you, but I will come to visit. You know, I was, I was coming to terms with all of this, and then Cor mentioned the cookies Beth Lasta makes around the holiday time, and now I'm resting. Oh my God. We're not going to get those cookies this year. That's tough. Man, COVID was okay. bad enough. <laughs> okay, I will, well, I will publicly promise that I will bring cookies for Christmas. All right, that's great. Great news. Uh, applause everywhere. Well, uh, thank you all uh, for joining us. Thank you all for all of you do out there for making BCTV such a strong and vital part of this community. Uh, it really is uh, starting with Cor and Vlasta and Brian and Nolan, uh, but right all down to you all. Uh, so thank you all for, for being part of it. And, and thank you for being part of this meeting. Of course, if you ever want to reach us, our meetings are public. So please do uh, stop by one of them and uh, visit with the board members when you can get a chance. That's it, 6.58. This meeting is adjourned. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you.